And let's move on to 47. So this one is very similar sample, but where uh, uh, the, the color of the open process will be, uh, can be slightly different. So how about I want you to start for number 47. Please use this attached to all new processes because uh, for the, the online games to mail the EXE, when it runs, it immediate, immediately create another process, and that process actually, actually call open process, you know, do the other, you know, uh, do, uh, it does the DLA injection in the new process. So please make sure you are using, you know, this option rather than the previous one. So the previous one is only looking at one process, right? But this one, I'm going to look at all the processes and start and at this point please check uh, a, uh, DLL you want to monitor it should be here XP yeah, there's a uh, Windows 32 XP and say yes and please go back to the malware class directory and go to samples and go to online games and go to number two. Then we start malware. Then on the and then when you have see warning, please say just yes. Right? Then you see some API calls. And when you see some API calls, then uh, you can say you know, stop monitoring. I just press the stop button here. Okay. All right. And I will give you another 10 minutes to, for this time, please, now I'm going to have this, you know, the API, the circulation available. Please verify, you know, what parameter value is actually used, you know, compared to the, uh, this uh, function declarations. Okay. So uh, one one thing uh, I want to point is the you know when you actually do the uh, no, malware analysis you may not using you may not use this you know tools exactly uh, you know, but however the you know API call you know patterns or the parameter you know return value those concepts doesn't change so you can use WinDebug or you can use some other tools but just I want you to grab this you know concept you know how they are doing it programmatically injecting or DLL right once you if you can, can you know, understand this concept, then that's the basic goal of this class. Okay. Okay. So let's start from the slide uh, 47. Okay. Um, question one is is a very obvious question. What is the man maneuvering method? Anyone? You know, it's like anyone, anyone. Yeah, um, get, uh, get process address from the library A. So library and yeah. then they exactly right yeah good yeah, you, you could spot basically you know again but you, did you see the so, uh, correct remote thread yeah yeah it goes in the process okay oh, okay right so the answer just in order to you know just uh, uh since uh, just following the one we have done is so method is a correct remote thread and actually they identified it okay it is actually uh called get prop address and the root library. Okay. The, since we uh, uh, explained, we learned about the uh, four API calls, right? Now everyone has a very clear idea, right? Now let's expand for to you know, get to the you know, get prop address and uh, get the like, module handle, those part uh, as well. Okay. All right. And let's see. Then how about question two, where is it maneuvering? Two. Is it there should be maneuvering two or just maneuvering? Which there should be two, right? Okay. What is the answer? Explorer. Explorer EXE. Okay, good. And what's the DLL of the uh what's the path of the DLL being injected? That was easier to find this. Easier to Okay, <laughs> good, good. I'm glad to hear that it was easier. That's good. It, maybe because the, you, it was an exactly load library case, was it? Okay. So the reason I actually 
uh, maybe I should uh, flip the sequence than the, uh, the other way around. Actually, I should do it. The reason I was to uh, have the, the other one first was because the other one was in the coding to create remote thread on its own process. But this case is actually create the process and then uh, for new process, actually calling the create uh, create remote thread. But actually, I should go the other way around. Oh, do that. Always you know, learn mistake right now, and then the other people can learn better. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's go here. Let's see, go from here. So when uh, let's uh, rather than jumping into the API call, I I want to actually uh, check here because because the hint I already, already gave you was you know okay the create remote thread will be called by the new process okay we already know that right but how about you know let's you know then how it is being called again kernel32.dll has all the functions that you know deals with memory and the processes right so when you actually go up here a little bit all the way up on your API call. Can you see create process? Right. This is a basically another you know uh, API call you can track. Right. Here. Right. Let's see more detail. Who's calling? Coding module. Right, I'm slightly now expanding our knowledge, you know, the uh, more right here. So, coding process. Is this the malware? Do you just launch it, right? So the malware process, right here, actually it calls create process, right? And how about the parameter? Okay, there's actually a lot of parameters, ten of them, but that's actually a lot. So when you when you do uh, you know, there is some in the common uh, API calls. Once you see this one, then let's go to uh, Google and search for create. I will go to actually Google. Then create process and MSDN. In most, do you see that one? It's actually even before it, you know finish it, it already searched as a very first hit. So when you see it here, uh, first one, MSDN, and you can go the def, uh, declaration, the definition of the uh, all the uh, parameters, right? And create process, it is actually getting application name and command line, right? Here, this is all. Let's see. What's this information? Current directory. Yes. So let's see. The first one, second one. This looks very interesting more than others, right? This one is based on when you create, you know, the process, you know, giving more specific, you know, uh, options here. But let's ignore the other parts and then let's go, uh, focus on the first two parameters. Oh, here, All right. And you see here first two parameter. Okay, application name is not actually given, so maybe name doesn't matter, right? Only the matter is then command line, right? So it is actually creating command line as we did with uh, system32 lin.exe, right? We didn't uh, verify it, but it's most likely either dropped by the malware exe or is copied right we probably as you still can see we can still go up here there's a copy file it's just too uh, very apparent right there's a copy file command right actually let's even let's go up because i do want you to just you know be familiar with this kind of uh, interpreting the interpreting the function calls here right do you see it's very clear copy file, right? And parameter, even without looking at the actual API, you see that one? It is copying itself, right? To system32 Alinda exe, right? And this is what is right here. And then it's called create process with that process, 
Okay. Any question? Oh, okay. The question, yes. Question was how many APIs are there? Yes, thousands, probably a lot of them. Now let's look at the open process nearby. Open process, process, and then the create remote thread. All right, here, there we go. So the answer was ex internet, uh, explore, explore process. It is you know, injecting, let's see, 1752. Actually, before, I, uh, before me jumping to uh, jumping to the uh, Answer directly. Let's see what it looks like. So, in the open process, we are interest, interested in the process ID, right? And we went back here and highlighted open process. And the third one was 1752. So, it's 1752. Let's go back, select columns, PID. Right, when you see here, explore that, yes, 1752, right? Right. Then the return of, of value, the handle value is 11EC, right? Let's see the next API call, virtual allow ES, right? Here, when you actually see here, Another thing to this, the calling module will always make sure this is a malware is calling it, right? And for virtual unlock, we are interested in which process and how uh, much it is uh, allocating the memory, right? So one one EC we just saw it, and how much is hex one o four, right? How about the return value? So it, it generates a uh, memory at the address CD0000, right? Okay, how about next? Write process memory. When write process memory is called here, it used, again, uh, process handle and the base address. And what is in the source, right? This is what we are interested in it. Here, write process memory, and the parameter was second to third. Okay, the first one, okay, process handle. Second one is EC, a CD000. Okay, this is just memory we allocated, and let's see the buffer. There we go. Uh -oh. Here, now there is a only a string, right? DLL path, right? This is more aligned with the uh, very uh, the explanation that I uh, gave you at the very beginning, right? So it uh, has a string here. And one of uh, four, hex 104 bytes. Okay, let's see the create remote thread, right? When you see the uh, Declaration here, okay, what is important? What important is process handle, right, here, and start address, which is one, two, three, fourth parameter, right? And we actually also interested in the fifth parameter as well. Let's see, fourth and fifth, right? Interesting, it's different from the previous example, right? Previous example was memory was you memory address was used as a start address, but this time is different, right? It's 7C801D7B, right? Then now let's go back where it's coming from, right? I want you to uh, reference slide 40, right? When you see the slide 40, there is a get module handle at, 
and get prompt address, right? Do you see actually luckily we see get module handle just right above this open process, just right above, right? And then we see get prompt address, right? Again, pattern is just, you know, is a pattern you don't have to be following exactly in a sequence of the you know, API calls, right? Let's see what this get module handle does. But as you can see, it actually, even without looking at the, uh, let's not even go to the uh, MSDN. Now it is very clear. Very first parameter is, is getting module's name. Right here, module usually, module and DLL is uh, they, uh, used interchangeably, right? That's the thing and, yeah, actually, that's, yeah, that's correct. Okay. Right. Module object, actually. Okay. Object, right. That, so, okay. Let, let's, let's, uh, I'm not a programmer. Let's, uh, let's go back. So, yes, a lot of, like, say, in general, object or modules that common terms to indicate can be file, can be some piece of memory, you know, places, you know. No, actually, object is used for the piece of memory more often, but module usually. I cannot say it is only DLL because it can be something yeah, else. Module right. can be DLL, can be DLL, yeah, can, can be, be P. P. Yeah, sure. Yeah, P. DLL is P, but executable okay. can be yeah. still module. So, but that's just a term. Yeah, common term. Term. All right. So let's say get module handle. Right. It gets a LP module's name here. It's already here. Actually, all right. So it gets the module's name, get module handle. How about the get uh, prompt address? Right? Here. You know what? Actually, I was a kid uh, missing this part. It actually already have the parameter name here, right in the left side of the value. Right? So when you can see here, so it gets, when you call get module handle, it returns. CF uh, uh, 7 c and zero 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 zero. Then that module handle actually used as a parameter, right? It give the module handle handle and then this uh, prop name is a procedure name. Actually, a yeah, prop prop here is a not the a process, but the procedure. You know, method, function, procedure. There's a kind of same meaning, right? The function, right? And it uh, give uh, as a load library. Okay, please give me the address of load library. And then this uh, return value, 7C801D7B, that one was actually one, the uh, address that was used here, right? So load library is actually used you know, directly. Now here, isn't it anybody make any question? Is that weird? How about get module? Let's see. I'm just really going nailing it down. You know what's going on actually? Get clock address process address. Okay, here get prompt address. It says retrieves the address of an ex exported function or variable from the specified DLL library. But who is actually coding it? Um, where do we go? Okay, here, right? When it calls get prompt address, it is actually getting address of load library of its own memory space. Do you know now why I'm gonna try to point? Then you know the question will be the address belongs to the you know, malicious process. Then how we gonna you know can be used on the you know target process? I explained that one before when you know when even even with the ASLR once we boot, one process has some DLS and a certain memory that is shared in the other you know process most of them. Mostly for the like something the contrary tool or other common in you know, a fundamental like a Windows DLLs. 
So they are, you know, they are you know, mapping to the same memory. So if I have a uh, load library, this malicious process has load library at the address of where was it? At the address of like you know C seven eight zero one B seven B at the same address on the Internet Explorer's process at that address it has load library as well, right? All right. Cool. How about any question? But those those values are are virtual addresses. Virtual addresses, yes. Always, you know, you, there will gonna be a little chance you actually see the physical memory address. Everything is a virtual address. And here, when I showed you at the beginning, I made it exactly kind of same you know spot to actually they are at the same address. Okay. Any question? <clears throat> 